In this lesson, we will review the extensor group of muscles that extend from the forearm into the fingers. Let's start by looking at an anterior view of the right elbow region to understand the attachment of the extensor muscles at this site. To orient ourselves, this is the distal end of the humerus, which has a prominent structure, bony projection known as the medial epicondyle, seen here. On the other side, on the lateral side, is the lateral epicondyle, which is seen over here. This distal end of the humerus articulates with the radius and the ulna. This is the radius, which is seen over here, and the ulna, which is seen over here. And the attachment of the extensor muscles is in the region of the lateral epicondyle and the bony ridge just superior to it, known as the supracondylar ridge. It's a general attachment for most of the extensor muscles. The clinical significance of this common extensor attachment at the lateral epicondyle area is that it is often inflamed and becomes painful, a condition known as tennis elbow. It often occurs in tennis players, but not exclusively, and hence the name tennis elbow. The similar condition can be found at the common flexor attachment on the medial epicondyle, and that is known as golfer's elbow. These conditions typically occur in sports persons who play these games, but can happen in individuals because of repetitive stress injury in a variety of different activities. Let's now look at the sites and the relationships of these various extensor muscles as they become tendinous at the wrist and at the, in the level of the hand. The first one of these group of muscles is the brachioradialis, and it attaches onto the distal radius as seen here. This muscle does not cross the wrist joint and therefore has no action at the wrist joint. It has action at the elbow only. The next muscle, which is immediately adjacent to it and on the ulnar side of this muscle, is a muscle that has a long name. It's called the extensor carpi radialis longus, or ECRL for short. And it runs down the radius crossing the carpus or the wrist bones and attaches onto the base of the second metacarpal. This name, the extensor carpi radialis longus, is very descriptive of this muscle it's an extensor muscle because it crosses on the dorsum of the wrist and it extends the wrist, hence the name carpi. It's on the radial side of the wrist and hence the name radialis. And it is the longer of the two muscles and hence the name longus. And you've guessed right, there is another muscle immediately adjacent to it known as extensor carpi radialis brevis or ECRB. And that is seen here going down to the base of the third metacarpal. These two muscles form strong extensors of the wrist joint and have a slight action of radial deviation as well and therefore will have a balancing muscle that we will look at momentarily. The next muscle in this group is a muscle that goes to the index finger and it is known as extensor indices proprius or EIP for short and it is seen here going to the distal phalanx of the index finger. This is the EIP. There's another muscle which is somewhat like the flexor digitorum muscles known as extensor digitorum and it is seen here going down to the various digits, the four digits, extensor digitorum communis or the common extensor digitorum, the common extensor of the digits, and sometimes abbreviated as EDC. This is the tendon of the EDC in the index finger. Similarly, we have this tendon going in the middle ring and little fingers as well seen in blue color. The EDC is a muscle that has a common belly more proximally and then splits into these four segments, one for each of the digits. And in that respect, it is not unlike the long flexors that are on scene on the palmar side. There's one other muscle which goes into the little finger known as extensor digiti minimi, EDM for short, and it is seen right here in red. Note that the index finger and the little finger have two extensor digits. They have an independent extensor in addition to the common extensor, the EIP for the index finger and the EDM for the little finger. 
This allows for a level of independent extension of these two individual fingers, which is not so easily seen in the middle finger or in the ring finger. There's one other muscle in this group known as the extensor carpi ulnaris, which is the most ulnar of these muscles, and it is seen here going to the base of the fifth metacarpal. This is a strong extensor of the wrist, and it has a balancing action with the extensor on the radial side. And like the ECRL and ECRB, the extensor carpi ulnaris, or ECU, it does cross the wrist joint but does not go into the digits. All of these muscles are supplied by the radial nerve. Let's now look at these tendons in a superficial dissection of the right hand, as seen in this photograph. We'll put the first tendon that is visible here, the ECRL. This is the extensor carpi radialis longus tendon, seen here on the radial side, and it does cross the wrist joint, going to the base of the second metacarpal. Immediately adjacent to it is the ECRB, the extensor carpi radialis brevis, seen here. These two tendons are on the radial side and they are strong extensors of the wrist joint. Next we see the extensor indices proprius, EIP, seen here, going to the index finger. We then have the four tendons from the EDC, extensor digitorum communis, seen going down here. There's a tendon going to each of the digits as seen here. And then on the ulnar side, we have the extensor digiti minimi, the EDM, which is seen going down here into the little finger. And finally, we have the extensor carpi ulnaris, which is going down the ulnar side and attaches onto the base of the fifth metacarpal. The ECU and the ECRL and ECRB only have their action on the wrist joint. Note also the specific relationship in the index finger and the little finger between the common extensor as well as their individual extensor. The EIP is seen on the ulnar side of the EDC tendon to the index finger. This is a consistent relationship. Similarly, the EDM, extensor digiti minimi, is on the ulnar side of the extensor digitorum communis tendon going to the little finger. This is also a consistent relationship. All of these tendons are kept in place by a fibrous membrane known as the extensor retinaculum. It is removed in this diagram. The extensor retinaculum is over the dorsum of the wrist joint.